If you start a new project like developing a game or making a movie or any other kind of storytelling, the first thing you need to do is you need to find a theme and the overall plot for your project. But shortly after that, you have to decide on the visual appearance of your project so that it supports the main message you try to convey. Today, I want to give you some insights on my thought process, how I came up with a decision to go for a low poly environment, mainly using the assets provided by Cinti Studio. In the past, the decision about your visual style was pretty easy when it came to gaming because there only was pixel graphics available. Today, even as an indie developer, you have the full range from 2D pixel graphics to low poly environments to photorealistic scenarios at your disposal. So the decision process is much harder and you first have to figure out what kind of look and feel best fits to your story so it's in consistent and supports the message you try to convey. So first of all, you need to understand what your theme or topic and message demands. In my case, I tried to explain the basics of AI to non-experts. And I decided to go for a very different route than all the other educational approaches to AI. I decided to create a game-like world inspired by games like Monkey Island and movies like Pirates of the Caribbean that I use for storytelling. AI is a very abstract topic and it's all about math and coding and stuff like that. And there is nothing that really requires photorealistic display. Like um, if I would do some educational video on how to operate a machine, then maybe I need a real photorealistic display of the machine so that the operator that learns about the machine knows where are the knobs and buttons and so on. But in the case of AI, we don't need this. It's rather the opposite. In case of AI, if you look at the visual language that's very often used in conjunction with um, articles on AI, it's all about this Terminator-inspired look and feel, and a lot of robots appear there, and they use stock photos, so it's photorealistic, but it has mostly nothing to do with the topic of AI, because robots are really a very tiny, portion of what AI is about. In contrast, I want to set more a counterpoint to that kind of visual language. So that's the main reason why I pretty quickly decided to go for a low poly environment, not a photorealistic one. There are only two exceptions why I deviate from the overall low poly approach, but I will come to this exception later on. But there are more aspects that you have to take into consideration when deciding on your overall look and feel and uh, visual style. One is um, the required rendering power. The more realistic your environment is, the more rendering power you require. And then you have to decide on which uh, device your game or whatever should run. And um, But in, in my case, it's not a problem because Everything is rendered on my machine, so I can select on anything I want. Um, so for me, that was not a criterion to, uh, to decide on the visual style. So from the compute power, I don't have any restrictions. And it was clear to me that I need something that's visually appealing to calm the mind of the audience and open them up to take a look at something abstract as AI. In more technical videos on AI, the authors often focus more on the technology behind that's to be explained than on the visual appearance. And that might be fine for the audience, but for my audience, I think this would be too abstract or still not visually appealing enough. So my basic requirement was to go for a low poly environment with a high visual appeal. But in addition, I also need a high variety of items in my scenes because I want to create a whole world and I need to talk about a lot of different stories. And so I need really many, many different items to do this. But on the other hand, I decided I don't need really a completely individual style for my world. So a lot of indie devs, they are proud that they develop everything from scratch, from the 3D arts to the textures, to the whole animation and things like that. But I, honestly, I'm not a 3D artist. I know the basics of Blender and texturing and things like that, but it would be way too much work for me to really get into it and develop everything from scratch. 
If you start off as an indie dev for a newbie in game development, it can be really overwhelming all the stuff that you can do, yeah, from 3D arts to animation to coding and storytelling on things like that. And you have to figure out what you are good at and where less and what you have fun doing on what less. And so I decided for me it's no problem to acquire assets and here and there copy some stuff. Um, and you should do the same. Yeah, do what you can do well and the rest just buy the assets that you re require to do your project. And this is really the advice I can give newbies. Don't feel ashamed of buying assets from the asset store if you are quicker and it provides solution to things you really don't like or can't do on your own. So from all the requirements I put together for my project, it was a big step to figure out that the assets provided by Cinti Studio are the best fitting my needs. First of all, there are not so many assets that figure this kind of pirate theme. Um, so that's why I started off. But in the meantime, I bought a lot of their different asset packs because they have such a huge variety of topics that exactly fit to my requirements with the different items that I need for my storytelling. And if you want to know more about the assets I'm using, look in the description. I have links to all the assets in there. The good thing about Cinti assets is I can mix them up. They are all the same style, this very similar color schemes. I can use the Pirates pack and put it into things like Roberts from other packs and mix it up and still it looks consistent. The disadvantage of Cinti is that you directly spot the assets from Cinti in any other game. Um, so whenever you see on, on Facebook indie devs posting videos on their games they are working on, you directly spot, okay, oh, he or she used uh, assets from Cinti. But I don't care because I don't want to distinguish my world, my gaming world from other games, but from other educational approaches in the area of AI. So that's what my world is made of. It's a low poly environment made of mostly Cinti assets, but there are two major exceptions. The first one is the skybox. I looked at the different skybox coming with the Cinti assets and also their clouds. And I figure out they look too cartoony for my purpose. So I looked around and I found some skyboxes that are still based on photos but fit to the overall appearance of my landscape. And the other deviation that I went for is the ocean. If you talk about pirates and islands, ocean is very important and also I live directly on the ocean so for me personally the ocean is very important and very emotional and I looked at the different solutions for low poly water and I figured out I can't stand low poly water. It has no visual appeal to me, it has no emotions and it's still too cartoony for me. So when I saw the Crest Ocean Renderer that I'm now using, it was immediately clear to me I need something like that even if it's not low poly because it conveys so much in my environment. It really is so much fun using it and looking at it um, and I had to figure out how to make it fit to my overall visual appeal that it's not becoming inconsistent and I think I found a pretty good way in configuring the the material and the water shader uh, that it really fits to the the rest of the low poly environment and sometimes I'm really just sailing around my islands and relaxing and it's so much fun looking at this and also that's the the feedback I'm getting that it really that people really enjoy this environment. Yeah, so that's why I deviated really from the slow poly water even if it has nothing to do with AI yeah, and the, the overall story but the emotions conveyed by this water shader are so much better than any other I have seen. So these are my thoughts on the visual appearance of my world and maybe it's helpful for you to figure out your own way. It took me about six months of experiments and figure out the right solutions for all the different parts and I'm still doing more experiments to figure out better ways of conveying my message. So if you like it, give me a thumb up 
and consider subscribing to my channel then you will not miss out on my next adventure and my next devlog where I will explain more on my thought process.